Good morning. Today we're leaving Dion. We're heading to our next city. But for our next city, most of the French people I know actually they told me not to go to this city because, well, they thought it wasn't the best representation of our friends. But you know, it's me, it's Sylvian Boche. And uh, one of the jobs I do is a bust myth. Or it's easier to say that I'm just a myth buster. So I'm gonna go grab some water, some breakfast. Then I'll meet you on the train. Oh, by the way, the train we're taking today is not a low cost, high speed rail anymore. So we're gonna see the difference between the regular priced and the low cost high speed train. And by the way, this train is twice the price of the train we took from Paris to Lyon. I was actually more eager to find out how the third city I'll visit in my friend's adventure is compared to Paris and Lyon. Because of all the negative things I heard about this city, I purposely made my trip there a relatively short stay. clearly see, the regular TGV train is not a double-decker like the low-cost train. There is more room between the seats and it feels more like a train rather than the economy class of an airplane. The lavatory uh, felt like it's the exact same thing as the low-cost train. Also, the total journey time is roughly the same compared to the low-cost alternative. Conclusion. If the low-cost train ticket was not sold out, I would certainly take the low-cost train again. Come on, it's half the price. Two hours later, I reached our next destination, Marseille. First thing first, I need to store my luggage at the hotel. All right, guys, so I just got into uh, Marseille and uh, just got into my hotel room. I uh, came here a little bit early, but the thing is, they actually have the room ready. So uh, I could uh, just uh, come straight in, and then uh, they actually offer me a free upgrade as well to a slightly bigger room. And the view of the newly upgraded hotel room, uh, well, you can't ask too much. It turned out to be a great thing, as I'd certainly prefer a quieter room. It also made me feel like I'm actually in Marseille not in Paris or Lyon. The hotel also offers mysterious gifts to guests for being eco-friendly. I'm only staying for two nights, and I don't think I'll need another new towel when I already have four in the room. I guess we'll find what that mysterious gift is the next day because we're right on the Mediterranean coast. Uh, it's definitely getting a little bit hot. So I'm just gonna change uh, my clothes and then uh, we'll uh, start exploring this uh, city. Marseille is the third largest metropolitan area in France and the modern day capital of Provence. As a city, Marseille is older than France as a nation and was first founded as Massalia by the ancient Greeks. My hotel happens to be right next to where the settlement of Massalia was first founded. This neighborhood today is known as Quartier du Panier. And guess what? Being the oldest neighborhood in Marseille also means one thing. It is the oldest neighborhood in France as well. 
Wow, I do not know what this is, but this looks so ancient. It's amazing. The tower is a part of a former Trinitarian church dated back in the 14th century. Today, after some 700 years, this is the only thing that remains. Right next to the tower, you see the old charity building, now a city museum. This place was where the less fortunate and the homeless were kept before the French Revolution, when the feudal system saw the poor as outcasts. After the revolution, when rights gradually became universal rather than just a privilege for a selected few, the old charity building became a hospice. Here, around La Bagne, you'll find different types of buildings. I even passed by a mosque that was hidden in plain sight. This neighborhood really does reflect the characteristics of a port city. It's a diverse and open melting pot where people from all walks of life meet and learn from each other. One thing very interesting while I was looking for recommendations on Google was that the search engine prompted the keywords "the Batnia Maxe dangerous." Huh? Looks like it was some kind of common conception of Maxe, both online and offline. Yes, by many places' standards, La Bagne might look a bit sketchy, as you see graffiti's almost everywhere. But you know what? These graffiti's turned out to be something the internet community also recommended as a must-see in this neighborhood. Now let's get to the fundamental question: Is La Bagne one of the more sketchy-looking parts of Central Marseille dangerous? Well, I was there. I didn't feel unsafe at all. The people I encountered there were mostly local residents, plus a few tourists, and they did not seem to be very concerned over the safety in the area either. But do pay attention that La Bagne is where real people live, though, so make sure be respectful to the neighborhood and the residents. Otherwise, just practice common sense like you would everywhere else. And I'm sure you enjoy Quartier du Bagne as much as I did. The unpredictable ocean climate brought down pouring rain from the sky, so I quickly retreated back to my hotel room. Conveniently, it was also around lunchtime, and downstairs from my hotel is a Palestinian restaurant. I ordered a set menu without knowing exactly what they are. Eventually, it turned out to be a starter dish consisted of fresh dips like hummus. The main course was kebab and pilaf. And the dessert, hmm, looks and tastes like baklava. Wow, that food was arguably the best food I've ever had in France so far. Wow. And、uh, my first impression of Marseille is that、uh, things are actually pretty organized here, and even the streets are much cleaner than Paris or Lyon. I have a very good feeling that whoever told me not to come to Marseille, well, you were wrong. And I'm so glad I didn't listen to those suggestions. The rain stopped while I was enjoying the lunch. It seems that the weather god of the Mediterranean is well aware of my Marse itinerary.
yeah it's a little bit cloudy but at least the temperature is uh, pretty decent I think it's around 16 degrees Celsius it's really comfortable so far based on what you know all the people recommended me I thought Marseille might be the only place on the Mediterranean that will disappoint me but you know what this city is awesome and if you uh, decide to come to Europe you pick anywhere on the Mediterranean coast you won't be disappointed if you see those two giant ships in the background at the first sight I thought those were just uh, cruise ships but then upon seeing what's written on them I realized they're both ferries and one of them goes to uh, Corsica so Corsica is uh, the birthplace of Napoleon Bonomar for those of you who don't know and uh, the other one goes to uh, Algiers in Algeria Marseille a bustling port city since the ancient times has been a crossroad where the people, the food, like the amazing Palestinian meal I had for lunch, and the cultures from different parts of the Mediterranean meet and fuse. This is also reflected in how some of the local landmarks were designed and built. One great example is Cathedral de la Major, or the Marseille Cathedral, which is located right above the modern port area. Well, it's a bit hard for me to explain what it's like just through words why don't we go inside so you can take a look yourself As you can see, the Marseille Cathedral contains elements of Byzantine, Moorish, and Gothic architecture. It is in such a distinct style that was unseen in grand churches of Lyon or Paris I had previously visited. I could only imagine a French city like Marseille would have such combination of styles due to its ties to the rest of the Mediterranean regions. The Marseille Cathedral and the Quartier du Bagne are certainly well worth a visit. Following the promenade in front of the Marseille Cathedral, I eventually reached a rather impressive fortress, as well as the entrance to Marseille's historic old port. So far I can tell you, I absolutely love this city. I have to say that all my French friends who told me not to come to the city again, you guys are wrong. Marseille, so far, is my favorite city in France. It turned out that Le Bagne and the Marseille Cathedral were just appetizers to what would be a great meal. The stunning skyline of the real Marseille, which was just unveiled before my eyes, further made me believe that I made a mistake by planning my Marseille adventure too short. I had a feeling that the real fun was just about to start. Our adventure in Marseille will continue. What will happen next? Follow me to Adventure in Marseille in the next episode. A very long way ahead of us and very steep one too. 